Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Jack Catterall, Regis Probrey. This is a must-win fight for Regis. But I'm going to tell you this right here, man. Jack Catterall. I've, I've got to wonder what's really going on with this dude. Because Jack Catterall can fight, okay? Um, but I just have to wonder when these fighters... Especially coming out the UK, just gotta be real. When you see that there's a fight scheduled that gets pushed back because they quote unquote have an injury, I'm starting to wonder about these fighters who claim that they were injured in training camp and have to delay the fight date. When I hear that, especially now with the, 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 the climate of boxing, I tend to think. Somebody may be on the cocktail. And I would hate to see Faridja's program to get in a fight with a guy on an uneven playing field in a fight that he must win. Now, this Saturday, man, with Regis and, and, um, and Jack Catterell, they finally get the face off. I mean, they had months and months of buildup. Regis program trying to convince himself and the world that he's getting better and at his peak at age 35 years old. But I'm not, I'm not so sure that he's at his peak and that he can really get in and bang with these other uh, super lightweight contenders, man. Uh, but the bottom line is we're going to find out. But Jack Catterall, he's got plans, and his plans are to not just beat uh, Regis Progray, but to get in there and tranquilize him. Now, I would tend to think that based on Devin Haney touching up Regis and hurting him, that a guy like Catterall, who seems to have more pop in his fist, may be able to get the job done. But I, if he knocks out Regis Progray, I think it'd be safe to assume that we got to question what is it that he he was doing and that Regis Progray just get, get old overnight. Don't get me wrong. Regis didn't look that great against Zoria. He didn't look that great, great against Devin. But if he comes out here now in Manchester, England, and he gets himself tranquilized by Catarrow, um I don't know. I, I tell you what, the excitement or the fallout from that knockout is going to be a lot more than the pre-fight buildup because the pre-fight buildup has been uh, nothing short of mundane because there hasn't been a lot of trash talk. There's been actually uh, pretty respectful to each other. And I guess, again, there's no world title on the line, so maybe that's why they're just trying to come out here and... Um, get a big win and avoid humiliation because neither one want to lose and then fall to the back of the line. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, man, uh, you got guys out here who think Regis progress time is over. But my, my, my thing is when you got a guy who has the power to knock you out like Regis, but then he gets in there with somebody who doesn't have KO power who knocks him, ends up knocking him out. That's where you got to ask the question. Now, let me show you something that I'm concerned about for Regis progress. This is Catterall versus Taylor, too. If you look at Catterall, the first round, he threw 32 punches. Second round, he threw 34. Third round, he threw 31. Fourth round, 44 punches. Fifth round, 63 punches. Sixth round, 57 punches. So you see, as the rounds progress, Jack Catterall's punch output improved. You look in the seventh round, 43. The eighth is 48. The ninth, 50 punches. 10th, 42 punches, the 11th, 39 punches, the 12th round, 48 punches. And the first round, this ain't the first, second, and third rounds. That's where you, you're fresh, you got all your energy. He threw 32, 34, and 31 punches. You look at the last three rounds, he threw 42, 42 39, and 48. You look at the middle rounds, his high was 63 punches around, and then he threw uh, 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 48 to 50. Let me tell you something. If, if, if Catterall can throw shots like that, Regis Progre is going to be in trouble unless Regis Progre can catch him. But how do you how do you go from barely throwing any punches the first few rounds to being able to, to s sustain um, throwing 45-plus punches, 50-plus punches, 60-plus punches around, especially in the, le the the second half of the fight? That's that's crazy That's crazy to me. You, you would think that you have more energy earlier and you kind of just taper down towards the end of the fight. But nonetheless... Just a conversation. Now, I think what else is going to be really important here, man, is getting off, uh, you know, power shots, man. If you look at uh, 
Taylor when he faced Catarrao. Uh, Catarrao landed um, 88 of 109, uh, 198 uh, power shots. 29 of those were body shots, uh, where uh, Taylor landed 102 of 227. So what you see here is what, as far as total punches thrown, uh, Catarrao threw more punches than Taylor. It was a, uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about. You look here, final punch that report, Catarrao threw uh, 176 uh, of 531 shots. Uh, and 40 of those were, were body shots. Then he threw 162 of 491, 56 were body shots for Taylor. So he threw more punches than Taylor. Again, when we start talking about these fighters, it's not even about high, having a higher connect percentage. It's about out throwing. You have to out throw your opponent to win. That's just something that I'm realizing, man, especially when you look at how fights have been going. We talk about what happened out there with uh, Baval Bertabia, or Shaki Foster can say so. You know, the guy who some people feel did more than enough to win uh, didn't throw enough punches in the judges' eyes, and they, they end up losing because the other – they may have landed 20 punches around. The other guy is only landing 12, but he throws 30 more punches that round, so it gives the perception that they're doing more work. Anyway – Regis Progray, Jack Catterall, Eddie Hearn. Listen, I just, I just have a, a funny feeling, man, that we may see Regis Progray, if not get knocked out, he's going to lose a split decision. It's out there in the UK. Eddie already wants to cut him because he didn't do that great. He signed a deal. That's why you look at Eddie Hearn. He's very particular about how the deals he signs with these fighters now. At any time, he can cut, cut ties with him. He's not looking. Even Eddie Hearn is like, this is a high risk for him to lock in a three-fight deal with uh, certain guarantees for fighters if the fighters don't produce. He takes a loss. So with Regis Progre, if he loses by majority decision, uh, if he just loses, he's out of here. Even if he wins, I think Eddie Hearn will sever ties with him. I just don't think Regis Progre has the marketability that he once had. And I just think he's slipping. But let's just wait and see how the fight goes. But all these fighters, man, that are having injuries and shit before a fight, goddamn... Tyson Fury, going all the way back to Klitschko. Uh, Berta um, and then here with Catarrao, and there are others. But when these fighters start having these injuries, makes me wonder what the hell is really going on. Really makes me wonder. But anyway, let's see how the fight plays out. But Regis Progre is in a high-risk fight. He's in a must-win fight. And if he loses, I personally think it's going to be hard for him to ever get back have any of the success and the acclaim that he once uh, he, he once uh, attained uh, years ago when he was entering the Josh Taylor fight. Y'all keep cool. I'm in the breeze.